The Enchanted Princess, retold from the original by Ludwig Bechstein. Once upon a time there was a city full of towers and battlements that seemed to stretch as far as the sky. And in this ancient and beautiful city there lived a leather craftsman called Marcus. He made bags and belts and would go from house to house throughout the city shouting, Who'll buy my wares? Many of the citizens would say they didn't need anything. But the truth was that they had fallen on hard times and were too proud to admit it. Marcus had two sons called Henry and John, and because nobody would buy his wares, he could hardly afford any food or clothing for them. They both realised that their father was very poor, but each of them dealt with the situation in a very different way. Henry was his father's favourite, but he was a very miserable boy who did nothing but moan about the family's fate while gentle John accepted their fate with a smile on his face and was always happy. One evening, after another day trudging from house to house with his wares, Marcus sat down on a bench in front of an inn. I'm absolutely exhausted, he sighed. The poor man hadn't sold one single thing, and he had walked so far that he'd worn out his wooden clogs. And when he looked in his purse, it was completely empty, so he couldn't even afford a jug of ale. While he was catching his breath, he overheard an interesting conversation going on between two men. The king of Arania has offered an amazing reward to the person who frees his daughter, Princess Esmeralda, said one of the men. Why, is she in prison? said the other. No, she's held under a spell in the castle of a wicked sorcerer, was the reply. And whoever accepts the challenge must complete three difficult tasks. It would take the bravest of men to complete the task, but if he can, the princess will be freed and he will win the sorcerer's fortune. Marcus couldn't believe his ears when he heard this. It seemed the perfect opportunity for him to get rid of his debts, so he raced home to tell Henry to take up the challenge. But how can I do these brave deeds if I don't even have a horse or a sword? moaned Henry. Don't worry, I'll buy them for you, said Marcus. I have some savings left. So Marcus went to market to buy his favourite son a horse and a sword, and he proudly waved goodbye to him as he set off to attempt the challenge. Henry was a fast, aggressive horseman, and in no time at all he reached the forest that surrounded the sorcerer's castle. As he galloped through the forest, he cut down a beehive with his sword and left the bees homeless. Then he deliberately rode over an anthill, completely destroying it and as if he hadn't done enough damage henry frightened a group of ducks that were sitting peacefully at the edge of a pond he killed ten ducks for the sheer thrill of it henry galloped on through the forest he was so arrogant that he didn't even stop to think about the misery he had caused to all the little creatures eventually he came to the castle where esmeralda was held henry jumped down from his horse and knocked at the castle door in an impatient and violent manner the sorcerer's assistant shouted out from a balcony above come in and have a rest you have three difficult tasks ahead of you so henry entered the castle but he was too nervous to sleep all night long he tossed and turned in his bed that night seemed like the longest night of his life oh how i wish morning would come so that i could get on with the tasks he moaned finally the castle bell struck nine on the ninth strike the sorcerer's assistant appeared again Follow me, she said. It is time for your first challenge. So Henry followed her into the next meadow and watched her scatter a bucket full of seeds all over the grass. Now, said the sorcerer's assistant, you must pick up all these seeds and put them back in the bucket. You have exactly one hour to do this. I've got to pick up all these seeds in one hour, Henry said. That's impossible. This must be a joke. But the woman didn't listen to his complaints and left without replying to his questions. How could anyone expect me to pick up all those tiny seeds without breaking my back? That woman must be mad, muttered Henry. Precisely one hour later, the sorcerer's assistant appeared again. You haven't even attempted the task, she said. Then she took twelve keys from her apron pocket and threw them into the moat. You have exactly one hour to retrieve the keys, she said. Again, Henry complained. I've had just about enough of this nonsense, he moaned. Come on, stop wasting my time and tell me when the real challenges are going to start. But the sorcerer's assistant had already disappeared. 
One hour later she came back, and although he hadn't attempted the second task, she gave him one last chance. To do the final task, she said, you must follow me into the castle. But this challenge is a very dangerous one, and if you fail you will pay with your life. There's still time to change your mind. Are you sure you're prepared to go through with this? Henry was furious at this suggestion. Give up the challenge, he shouted. I would never give up the challenge. I'm going with you into the castle, and whatever I have to do, I will do it. So tell me what the task is. The sorcerer's assistant took him to a room where there were three veiled figures. Then she told him, Now you must decide which of these three figures is the princess. I've never heard such a ridiculous challenge. I suppose you're going to tell me I have exactly one hour to think about it. Well, I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to choose right now. I think the princess is the one on the right. Hi guys, I hope you're enjoying the audio ebook. I won't keep you for long. Last year I was demonetized by YouTube and so I lost all opportunity to earn. But I love sharing the audio ebooks with you so much, I carried on. If you value what I'm doing here, please consider heading over to my other channel, Book Club, and hitting that subscribe button as a sign of support. The link's in the description. Now, back to the book. Enjoy. No sooner had he pointed at the veiled figure he had chosen than it turned into a dragon that roared and breathed fire at him. Oh no, I've made the wrong choice, sobbed Henry, and the heartbroken Princess Esmeralda, who was the figure in the middle, could only watch the terrible scene that followed. Henry cried out, Please take pity on me. I know I made a mess of all the tasks, and I have no claim on the princess or the sorcerer's fortune, but surely I don't deserve to die for this. But Henry was wasting his time. Sorcerers don't listen to excuses. They set their tasks and expect them to be done. So, on the sorcerer's command, the dragon then took the terrified young man in its teeth and threw him over the balcony. That was the end of poor old Henry. Marcus didn't know about Henry's fate, and for one whole year he waited anxiously for his return. After one year of waiting, Marcus felt that he could wait no longer, and he decided that he must go and find out what had become of his eldest son. But John knew that his father was getting old, so he offered to go on his behalf. Although his father and brother hadn't always treated him that well, he didn't bear them a grudge, because all he wanted to do was to free his father from poverty. And so, without a sword or a horse, he set off. He took the same path through the wood that his brother Henry had taken, and when he came to the pond he had a little nap until he was woken by the ducks. They were not afraid of this gentle-looking young man. They even waddled out of the water to get a closer look at him. John loved the ducks and shared his bread with them. Then he continued on his way. Next he came across the ant hill, where the ants were rebuilding their broken home. He helped them to mend it by digging up earth and working with the straw. The ants were very grateful for his help and hoped that one day they would be able to repay him for his kindness. Next he saw a swarm of bees busily trying to repair their hive, so the thoughtful fellow picked a wonderful bunch of flowers full of pollen for them. John's behaviour was obviously very different from Henry's. Finally he arrived at the sorcerer's castle. The sorcerer's assistant met him at the door and told him to have a rest before attempting the tasks. John had the best night's sleep he had ever had and felt refreshed and full of courage the next morning. On the strike of nine, the sorcerer's assistant appeared out of nowhere, as sorcerer's assistants do. She told John about the first task. Gather a bucket full of seeds scattered in a meadow. Well, it sounds difficult, but I'll certainly have a go, said John. He knew that he'd have to try, because he desperately wanted to help his father. So he knelt down in the meadow and picked up the seeds one by one, but there was no way he could pick them all up in one hour. Then, suddenly, a long line of ants appeared. They were coming to help him. There were so many of the little creatures that in a few minutes they had picked all the seeds up. Thank you so much, said John. Think nothing of it, said the ants. It's just our way of repaying you for helping us rebuild our home. John had done well. He had finished the task before the time was up. I am very pleased with you, said the sorcerer's assistant. Now it's time for your second task. Again she threw twelve gold keys into the moat and gave John one hour to get them all back. This task worried John because he wasn't a very strong swimmer but he knew he had to try for his father's sake. 
He dived into the moat, and the water was so cold and dark that he couldn't see the bottom. John swam back up to the surface straight away. How am I going to get those keys back? he muttered to himself. And as he stared helplessly into the dark, cold water, he saw his old friends, the ducks, swimming towards him. They wasted no time in diving into the moat and retrieving the keys for him. How can I ever repay you? said John when he saw them with the keys in their beaks. You already have, by sharing your bread with us, was the duck's reply. The sorcerer's assistant appeared again. You have done very well this time, she said. Now it's time for the final task, but I must warn you that if you do not complete the task, you will pay with your life. I'm not afraid, said John. Tell me what the task is. So the sorcerer's assistant took him to the room with the three veiled figures, and the challenge was set again. Then the sorcerer himself appeared. Choose, he said. He watched John carefully. How can I choose? I don't know which of the three is the princess Esmeralda. Suddenly the swarm of bees he had met in the wood came to his rescue. The bees started buzzing around the head of the figure in the middle. John told the sorcerer that he thought this one was the princess, and he was right. He was so relieved when he saw that two dragons were under the other veils. Then John turned to the bees in his usual gracious manner and said, Thank you, kind bees, you have saved my life. The veil fell from the figure in the middle to reveal a beautiful girl. I am Princess Esmeralda, she said. Thank you for breaking the spell that has held me prisoner all these years. Please take me away from here and make me your wife. And then the sorcerer and the two terrifying dragons disappeared, while the sorcerer's assistant congratulated John on successfully completing all the tasks. John then took the princess's hand, but in the excitement the shy young man had forgotten to introduce himself to his future bride, and before he could do so she said, I don't know your name, but I will call you my love. The king gave a magnificent party to celebrate his daughter's freedom and her wedding to gentle John, and Esmeralda couldn't have found a better husband than John if she had met all the suitors in the land, because he was a kind man who had a great respect for nature. Old Marcus was invited to join in the celebrations and to share his son's happiness. And although he was sad about losing Henry, even he had to admit that it was John and not Henry who proved himself to be the better son. The end. If you value what I'm doing here, please consider heading over to my other channel, Book Club, and hitting that subscribe button as a sign of support. The link's in the description.